If you're like me and uh, enjoyed uh, music in the 1970s, you probably enjoyed uh, vinyl albums, 12-inch albums, and probably enjoyed the artwork on the album as much as the music itself. Certainly I did. Um, and perhaps you're part of the vinyl uh, resurgence now and uh, getting into um, album art for the first time. I thought it would be interesting to attempt to create a piece of what we might call album art. Um, really a piece of uh, photographic art inspired by a piece of music. And I want to try to do that using uh, fairly simple materials that we would find around the house. So come with me and let's see how we get on. So how do we go about creating a piece of uh, photographic art inspired by music? Well, we, we begin really with the, the inspiration and from that uh, develop a concept and then aim to execute that concept to bring it to reality. The inspiration that I have really is from one of my favourite bands of all time, Pink Floyd, and from their piece Echoes, which is on their album entitled Medal. Echoes takes up half the album, and I think a lot of people confuse Echoes with the album, uh, but there's a whole other side of different music on there. Um, so Echoes is the piece that I want to try to create a piece of artwork for. Um, the album itself kind of reflects the Echoes theme because it it's a picture of an ear uh, underwater. What I want to do is something a little bit different from that. I want to kind of be respectful to the, the original concept, but I want to do something that is particularly kind of inspired by Echoes itself. Within the track, you can hear an acoustic ping uh, from like sonar. Um, and the the lyrics are really quite um, revealing in terms of uh, the imagery that it conjures up. It talks about overhead an albatross hangs motionless upon the air. Deep beneath the rolling waves and labyrinths of coral caves, the echo of a distant time comes willowing across the sand and everything is green and submarine. So the concept that that kind of inspires in me is being underwater and looking up uh, through the water to see an albatross uh, hovering over the waves. How are we going to do that? <laughs> using uh, material that we would find around the house. Well, to begin with, I'm not going to be able to shoot uh, up through water, so I need to create the impression of that by shooting down. So what I'm going to do for that, I'm, I'm going to use um, this clear dish um, so we can get some water in here and I need to be able to light, have some lighting from underneath to um, mimic daylight uh, from the clouds uh, in the sky above. Um, so what I need to do for that is I'm going to use this uh, collapsible crate, which conveniently the dish sits across and balances on. So that gives me space underneath to, to put the um, the light source, which in this case will be um, a speed light and uh, it will be triggered remotely by um, a separate flash which will be uh, kind of picking up the, the, the surface of the water. Um, this needs to be fairly heavily um, diffused, so I'm going to, uh, to achieve that, I'm going to take a piece of A4 paper and my plan is to sellotape that to the bottom of the the dish uh, so that we're shooting through that. Uh, the lighting from above will be with a, a flash on a, a big softbox uh, which will uh, highlight the, the, the surface. And then uh, 
what I'll need to do because water <laughs> being clear uh, doesn't really show up that it needs to be coloured but then the ocean water is coloured anyway so I'll be using um, a couple of food dyes I've got a red and I've got a blue uh, so we'll, we'll put those in and we can always do some colour correction in post production anyway I've got a straw which I'll use to bring up the food dye and drop it into the water. I have got matches. Um, I'll tell you why I've got a match later when we get to that point. And I have got some black paper. My intention with the black paper is to line the crate with it so that we cut out any, any ambient light or any risk of catching uh, any of the, the, the structure of the um, the crate through the glass dish. So what I'll do is I'll get this set up uh, and then I'll talk you through the setup once that's done. So here I've got the EOS 7D uh, tripod mounted but configured so that it's shooting straight down onto the dish. Below the dish um, the speed light uh, which is set to slave mode so it will uh, fire when the, the main flash goes off goes under there um, pointing up and then over here in a big soft box we've got Godox flash unit um, as I say in the big soft box this is the purpose of this is to pick up uh, the surface reflections uh, on the water. There we go, that's probably sufficient. Now the thing is, as I explained earlier, if you've just got clear water you're not going to get anything really photographic out of that. We need uh, contrast in the water and for that we need colours, hence the, the food dyes, but I need to make sure that I've got good focus on the, the surface of the water. That is where the match comes in. Uh, so if I just get a match, and the good thing about the match is it floats on the surface, so I just want it in there, and I'll use that now to set the focus. That's now set, so I'm going to switch the camera out of autofocus and into manual focus. That now should not move, and the key thing now is to remove the match from the water. The next thing I need to do, because the, there's ambient light here, we're not I'm not shooting this in the dark, otherwise there'd be, there'd be no video. Um, I need to get a shot here on camera settings that gives me a completely black or dark image, which then means that I'm in control of all the lighting from the, the flash underneath and the flash overhead. So that's the next job. Um, let's see if we can get a shot on settings which gives me a black. So I'm going to make sure my ISO's on 100. I am going to choose something like 50th of a second and I'm going to go for F20. Let's just see. Perfect. So that's ideal. Um, 15th of a second, F20, ISO 100, totally black um, result, and uh, those settings are compatible uh, in terms of flash sync. So the next thing to do is to actually give this a go. Take the shot. Now some red. And we'll just create a bit of 
motion on that. Okay, here we are in Lightroom. That's the photos imported. And as you can see, we've picked up um, mainly the red colouring uh, from the shoot, which, which is fine. We're going to make some adjustments anyway. So the first thing I like to do is to get into the develop mode and we'll do lens corrections, remove the chromatic aberration. And then if I press and hold shift, click up to nine, we'll synchronize these. Um, if all these come up, I would say check none and then make sure you check process version and lens corrections. Synchronize. That runs through them all. And let's come back to the first one now. The, the job here is to choose which ones I actually want to work with. Uh, number one seems a bit dark number two i really want three at them oh i like that uh, i want i'm going to give that five stars already i like that one i'm looking for three that i can use uh, one to be a, a kind of top layer uh, reflecting the sky one to be a mid layer and one to be the, the kind of the depths um so that one's looking good i like i like the the highlights here and the ripples number five yeah quite like actually yeah i like that too i'm going to give that five as well six this darker area here is more talking to me about the depths this too although we've got a nice highlight up here that's kind of almost looking up and i've got some bubbles down here this one similarly, no. What about, oh no, definitely not. No, number seven. I'm going to have that. So I think I'm selecting four, five, and seven. But before we take them into Photoshop, what I want to do here is maybe a little bit of um, color grading, because this is this is all really too red. Although it evokes a nice kind of atmosphere um, but what I want to do is um, take this one let's take the highlights and move them a bit towards blue we'll take the mid mid tones up here and I'm going to take them towards green maybe not quite as far as that but yeah right about there that's quite nice just brighten that up slightly actually maybe brighten up the blues a bit now and the highlights too yeah and then the shadows oh didn't want to go that way yeah, let's take them round to let's take them round to there and I think what I might do is on this one come back to the basic tab and just increase the exposure slightly okay that's that's reasonably pleasing okay let's uh, come to number five now and again back to color grading and we'll start with the highlights and take them into into the blue area and the mid tones to that kind of green yeah and the shadows and about there maybe and again I think I'll just pop back to the basic module increase the exposure slightly yeah 
There we go. And finally, on number seven, color grading, highlights. Again, we'll start there into the blue, mid tones, a bit into the green, and the shadows we'll take down to there. Okay, fine. And again, increase the exposure just a bit. Okay, so I think I'm happy with those. Uh, we'll come back for the albatross later, but for the moment, I'm going to take 7, 5 and 4 over into Photoshop. So 7 is highlighted. If I press and hold Control, click on 5, click on 4, then right click and say Edit in Photoshop. So there we have Photoshop opened up with each of them as you can see on a separate tab so what i want to do is get them all on the same tab this one i think is my top layer this one is probably mid layer and this one is probably base layer so i think what i'll do is let's just enable that i'll unlock that one double click on there and call that no we'll call it surface I want that to be the kind of the water surface one. This one, let's unlock it, double click and call it mid. And then we'll come to this one, unlock it, double click and we'll call it deep. Okay, so let's come back to mid. I want to right click on that. I want to duplicate the layer and I want to send it to 1316. So we'll click on that, say OK. And let's make sure it's there. Yep, there we are. And then we'll come to this one deep, right click, duplicate layer. And we'll send that to 1316 again. Say OK. Let's make sure it's there. Yep, there we are, deep, mid and surface. So we can get rid of these other tabs. Do you want to save the changes? No. And no. And now I've got them all on the same tab. So I want surface to come to the top and mid in the middle and deep at the base so there we go they are all there what i want to do now with this one is start playing around a little bit with um distortion and creating some different kind of effects in here so with that one highlighted i'm going to go to filter distort and choose ripple um, and let's just take that down a bit okay see what that gives us nothing much okay we'll do filter distort and twirl there we go We've got that kind of effect coming up there. We can move it whatever way. I think I'll maybe move it that way. Go to about something like that. Press OK. Ah, and that's created a nice little space in there. Nice kind of sense of flow. OK, let's come down to the mid one. Turn off the surface one. And here... I think I maybe want to, yeah, filter again, distort. Let's try wave on this one. You can see we've got this preview here. Change the wave like that. Maybe want it quite. 
quite long like that. And we'll, no, the amplitude doesn't want to be too high. That would start to look silly. That, that, that's maybe okay. And the scale, no, I'll leave the scale up at 100. And we'll see. Okay. Ah, there, there's what we have. So let's put on the surface layer, but we'll take its transparency down a bit now. Whoops, make sure we're on the correct one. The mid layer should be at 100% and that, yeah. So surface layer will take that transparency down a wee bit. Hmm, I wonder, what do I like? Yeah, I like that top there. Um, I wonder maybe what I'll do pop a mask on there and make sure we're on black let's choose a brush let's make it fairly fairly soft actually and Okay, let's start to just paint away some of that to bring in some of the layer that's underneath. This bit here I'm not happy about, so let's switch to a white brush, make sure we're on there and just kind of restore restore that there a little bit. There we are. That's looking a bit better. Okay, so on, let's turn off the top one, on the mid one here. Top one is at 63% opacity. Let's take that up a wee bit. Okay. Okay, that's beginning to look a little bit like what I was kind of having in mind. Okay, so I'm going to let that, I'm going to let that sit for a bit. I may come back to that. And what we'll do now, is let's pop back to Lightroom. Let's highlight the albatross. We'll right click and say edit in Photoshop. And we'll edit our copy with Lightroom adjustments. Say yes to that. And there it is already into Photoshop. So if we do Control G, we'll get a duplicate layer because I don't want to accidentally harm this. Now, what I want to do is, is really just have the albatross. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select subject. And hopefully that will work its magic. There it is. So it's picked out the albatross really quite neatly, as well as the other one below. And what I'll do now is apply a layer mask to that. Now, if we turn off the bottom one, there we go. We can see that we've got that nicely isolated. So what I want to do here is I think get rid of this other albatross uh, down below. So we'll make sure we're selected on the layer and uh, black remove. So let's switch this to black and brush size needs to come down 
quite a bit so let's bring it down to about there a little bit smaller and we'll just start to brush that out there we are there we are that I think is what I want duplicate layer and we want to send it to 1316 okay over to 1316 and here it is coming there let's pop it to the top but as we can see um, it's coming pretty small so what I want to do with that now is let's go to edit free transform and I'll press and hold shift it and we'll just make that a bit bigger bring it into where I think I might want to use it maybe down a touch okay so what I now need to do with that make sure I'm selected on the image not on the mask and we'll take that opacity down because we're looking at it through the water so it's uh it's not seen quite as clearly so there we are we've got our albatross into the photo we've got a sense of ocean depth here and we're looking up through the waves through the water it's nicely kind of distorted and a bit arty and that's looking not too bad so the next thing will be to add some text so to add the text i'm going to add a new layer there we go double click on that yeah we'll call it echoes and i'm going to choose the text here and this has come out as Cooper Black, which actually I think is going to be quite nice. So let's just type in Echoes. Yeah, that looks nice, actually. And I, I, th I think I want it. Um, let's just take the move tool. I think I want it just kind of diagonally across from the albatross but because this is an echo let's echo the word so if I come on to this um, layer here and do control J we get echoes copy if I take the move tool I'll just bring that down below it and what I'll do with that is I'll take its opacity down maybe to about 50%. Yeah, let's take it down to 50%. And now keeping the uh, selection on the Echoes Copy layer, we'll do Control G again. We get Echoes Copy 2. We'll drag that down below, keep it about the same distance. And we'll take that opacity down to 30%. Yep. And then we'll do Control G again. Echoes copy 3. Bring that down. And we'll take that opacity down to 20%. And then once more, Control J. Bring that down below and we'll take that opacity down to 10%. And can we do that once more? Control G, copy 5, pull that down, take that opacity down to, yeah, maybe 5%, about 5%. There we go. And that gives the sense of the, to me, it kind of reflects the sonar ping 
and the echo just fading as it goes deeper. So that, I think, I'm now broadly happy with it. It's fairly, it's fairly stylized. It has the sense of water. You have the sense of depth here. You have the sense of surface movement waves here in the albatross above it. I'm reasonably happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is control S to save it. That will save it back into Lightroom. There we have it in Lightroom. So back to Photoshop and we can control W to close that. We can close down Photoshop. And there we have the finished piece well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found that helpful and interesting. Uh, maybe inspiring you to go off and create some uh, music-inspired artwork of your own. If you did enjoy this, please remember, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, all of which helps the channel to grow. And I'm really grateful for everyone that does that. So until the next time, take care.